It's Wednesday, March 7th at the West End Gun Club. Uh, it's just before seven o'clock. I just came out here to do a quick uh, quick range visit to chronograph the loads that I was uh, working on with the Peterson cartridge brass with six millimeter Creedmoor. Um, if you were following my, my past vlogs, you notice you know that I uh, started low on the Peterson six millimeter brass. And so I thought that the uh, brass would actually be uh, less case capacity and have uh, I would need to start with a lower load, but apparently it's more comparable to the Lapool brass that I'm necking down. So I came back out, adjusted my loads to come up more to get to the 41 grains of H4350 that I anticipate I'll be using. So uh, I loaded more rounds at the uh, at the higher range or higher um, load capacity or higher powder charge in that window. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot about 20 rounds or 25 rounds and that's about it and get out of here. So it's gonna be a quick range session uh, there's no one out here except one guy on the pistol side and there's an RSO They're doing some range work, but hopefully I can, I can ask the guy for a ceasefire. I'll throw my targets out there, shoot a few groups, chronograph the data or chronograph the loads, record the data and get out of here. At the last range session where I was testing this Peterson cartridge, six millimeter Creedmoor brass, I only went as high as 40.5 grains of H4350 with the 105 Burger hybrids. <clears throat> that was hovering at around 30, 30, 50, so 30, 50 feet per second, 3,050 feet per second. And so I loaded three sets of 10 with 40.8, 41, 0.0 and 41.2 grains and I don't know the temperature I forgot to bring well I did I didn't uh, bring my Kestrel because battery's dead and I was too lazy to change it out this morning um, so we're just going to go off of my Mudmaster thermometer again which I used uh, the last range session thing is you got to take the uh, range or sorry the watch off your wrist otherwise the body heat affects the uh, temperatures so uh, we're just going to get shoot these uh, some rounds off, get uh, three sets of chrono data with the different at 40.8, 41, and 41.2, and we're pretty much done. Wind's about three three miles an hour maybe at most. You can hear the beeping. Got a. We usually have a club. Uh, range officers or RSOs or volunteers or whoever working on range maintenance during the week just to keep things squared away. So dirty bore, I didn't clean the uh, barrel since the last range session, so I got 50 rounds through the barrel, or it's got the foul length on 50 rounds since the last range session in the barrel. And that was a wasted round because I left my turrets at 3.3 mils from the last rain session. But so the rounds on a rounds on a paper anywhere. So went over the top. Oh well, but it is 30.59 feet per second. So on a cold, dirty barrel. The uh, first round of the day was 30, 59 feet per second with 40.8 grains. So second shot was 30, 89, so it jumped up 
30 feet per second. Could be good, could be bad. We'll see if this is within the range. So we're a three tenths of a three tenths of a grain higher from 45, 40.5. And it's pushing 30 feet per second faster, maybe. Yeah, 30.77. So I figure it would have been around 30.75, 30.80 for a three tenths of a grain difference, but we'll just let the let the data speak for itself. Thirty seventy. Still up and down. As far as the velocities are concerned, but the grip looks really good, at least from here. If you notice behind me, I drove the Tacoma today because haven't putting much mileage on my other vehicles ever since I got the Jeep, so just wanted to take this out today. At least uh, to the range, but probably saw in my last video that I posted. If you subscribe to my channel, I did a, a very long, lengthy uh, video about the Jeep, a little some of my gripes and some of the things I do like about it. But I was going to drive the Jeep today uh, to the range because I wanted to record a recovery gear vehicle, uh, re recovery gear video because I assembled a recovery kit to supplement the winch, and so just wanted to cover a little bit of that because I'm writing an article uh, as well, but. I wanted a video to supplement that, and uh, but I decided I'll just go and film that another time, because uh, I I was going to take the day off, but I figure I can just get this done really quick and then go home, switch to the Jeep, and dump all my gear, and then uh then go to work so I don't have to waste the vacation day. And uh, anyway, enough talking, more shooting, so I can get these rounds down. Thirty eighty five. Thirty ninety. This group is really bad, actually. I've already thrown three rounds about an inch apart from each other. Okay, the group is favoring low on the point of aim, it's where I expected it to be. But I threw one round out. I'll go ahead and shoot another group with this in a few minutes here, and I'll keep this uh, series aggregate. I got enough paces out there to shoot six individual five round groups, but I'll go ahead and shoot this on this. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and shoot this on another paster. Group is better than the last one. The last, the last group is sloppy. This one's better. Well, I pushed one to the right, but looks like we're hovering at just about 3085, 3090 with 41 grains and 4350 with the Peterson brass. But let's go ahead and let the Lab radar tell me. So we're looking at 41 grains, which is what I thought I would have loaded with this ammo or with this brass initially, but I was just being conservative or cautious working up the load. Uh, it's a 30, 90 feet per second average. It's a 10 round aggregate. Talking standard deviation of 6.5. Extreme spread of 20. Um, not, that's not that good, but I think we're okay. I mean, the lowest is 3085, the highest is 3105. It could have been an anomaly, but again, as I mentioned in the last vlog, or a couple of vlogs ago, my uh, my my reloading setup is not the greatest as far as the scales are concerned. I'm looking to get to get a better scale because that that packed Digital Precision Pro just isn't cutting it for the type of uh, accuracy that we want or the consistency we want in ammo. So hopefully, I can divert some funds to that soon. To get that in the auto trickler. I just realized the video uh, 
the settings on my camera were a bit off. So it'd be, I'd be interested to know when I do edit this range vlog, how the video looks. Cause I was using a different frame rate. So if it looks kind of weird, oh well, I'm sorry. That was my fault. As you can see here, there doesn't appear to be any pressure issues going up to 40, 41.2. So I think that any stories that have been perpetuated regarding Peterson Brass having pressure problems, uh, I don't see anything. And this is comparable to my Lapua loads, my Lapua Brass, the 6.5 neck down to 6. So everything looks good, no cratering. Primers look good, no no serious flattening. So this will go in my review as far as Peterson six millimeter Creedmoor brass, as far as how uh, how it looks, as far as pressure signs. I fired uh, six rounds with 41.2, as you can see here. The average is 3098 or 3100 feet per second. Standard deviation of 7.2, extreme spread of 19. It's just slightly faster than 41, so I think there's diminishing returns right there. I'm obviously I could shoot a larger aggregate of rounds to get a better average, but I think I'll stick with 41.0 right now on and. Uh, Based on what I'm seeing on target, but we'll take a look at the groups when I pull my target. This is the first group of the day with 40 point, sorry, yeah, 40.8, which is really nice actually. That's, I would estimate that to be about at least a third of a minute. That's the second group, which was really sloppy. I was able to actually focus a little bit better. I threw this round to the right, but as you can see, the group is still fairly good uh, throughout the flyer here. And then this is the last group, of this, so this was 41. 40.8, 41, 41, and a 41.2. I threw this first round and then I fired five more, so I closed up that group. So, based on the data I'm seeing here, I can probably work with this, with these two, kind of as my sort of this anchors, and then I have enough leeway to still shoot decent groups uh, if my scale is off. And uh, I think I'll work with 41.0. So, 41.0 just a shade under 3100 feet per second i have to look at the average again which i mentioned earlier but i think it was 3085 3080 so uh, this looks good um th that's really sloppy but uh, obviously uh seems like my first first group of the day i was able to focus a little bit better and then i just started to, to really just get sloppy on everything so it's kind of need to be better as far as uh making sure that I actually take the time when I'm shooting these groups so I'm getting valid group data. But my velocity data is kind of more important to me it's just to make sure that I know where I am with the uh, various powder charges I'm going to use. So again, this is Burger 105's 6 mil Creedmoor with the Burger 105 hybrids, Peterson cartridge brass, small rifle primers, CCI BR4s, and H4350. I will take as I was firing my last few rounds or that last string, another guy showed up to the range and he set up his lab radar while we were not in a ceasefire. Granted, we were about, you know, 40 benches away from each other. He was on, I was on the far right, he was on the far left, which is about almost, uh, I would say, 75 yards away uh, laterally. But walking forward of the line and setting up a chronograph. 10 feet, you know, 10, 15 feet in front of the benches. That's just not the way you're supposed to roll um, with proper range procedures. Grant, I told him beforehand when he arrives, hey man, I'm going to fire my, uh, I'm going to fire about 10 rounds and that's it. I'm done and we can call ceasefire and do what you need to do. And I didn't know who sent him the chronograph. 
But uh, guys get a little impatient with this stuff as far as setting up chronographs, which is why, you know, back in my old range, I would never do that. You know, I would set up my gun first, uh, then set up the target, and then set up my chronograph. And so it takes about two line breaks. Granted, it takes forever, right? And depending on what range you go to, this could take a long time to set up, which is why I encourage the acquisition of at least a magneto speed or a lab radar so you don't have to set up a chronograph forward of the line and take up all that time because you're waiting for ceasefire if it's on a shared shared firing line. It's just easier to run a magneto speed or a lab radar so you have the chronograph at the bench. It takes zero, very little time. You don't have to wait for other people to set up. It's just all on you. But anyway, I just get irritated by that little detail with as far as traditional optical chronographs. Guys will just try to set up their, their chronograph while there's live fire technically going on. Granted, I wasn't firing. He might have just waited till I was not shooting and ran out there and threw his tripod and chronograph up. But at the same time, could have just asked, or frankly, could have just waited because I was almost done. And he would have had plenty of time to set up his chronograph when after I fired my, my 10 rounds or my 5 rounds or whatever, which only took me a couple minutes. And he would have had all the time in the world because I was going to go forward to the line to pick up my target anyway. But again... Magneto speeds are so inexpensive now. They're about 200 bucks. Well, inexpensive. 200 bucks to me, I think, is very low cost as far as convenience is concerned. And uh, and if you're going to use an optical chronograph, my opinion is you just need to be patient and work with the people on the line because for what you're trying to do is also intrusive to other people. So you need to just follow safety procedures, range protocols, and set up your chronograph within compliance of, of just basic range safety rules i exited the range facility so i'm just here on the creek bed about to get on the main road to head to the freeway to get home but as far as this range log is concerned really short or really short range session the peterson brass i think so far so good i'm going to write an article just kind of reviewing the brass it's not going to be an extensive review because i don't have the time to shoot the volume i need to do like a long stress test of the brass, you know, how many times can reload it, how the pockets open up. But to give you a short summary, if you're not going to wait for that article, I think the uh, Peterson cartridge 6 mil small rifle primer brass is appears to be very, very, very good. Um, compared to Starline, way better brass. Um, I was thinking about nicking down 6.5 uh, Starline brass to make 6 cream more to do it on the cheap. Starline brass, I just don't like the what's coming out of that as far as the uh, quality control. And uh, Lapua brass, I think, still the, still the best stuff, but if I can shoot native brass, native six mil creamer without having to neck down, uh, and I don't have to mess with neck turning, I think right now Peterson cartridge is the option for me at this point. I know there's that alpha brass everyone keeps raving about on six Creedmoor, and they're supposed to have a six small rifle primer version out now, but uh, the the guy who built my gun likes Peterson cartridge brass because he's he uh, they shot a lot of it in 3.3 Lapua I think, and a lot of guys are liking Peterson brass. If you're in the know, Peterson brass is is got good reputation right now, and so I'm going to stick with it. Um, but the six mil Creedmoor brass, I think it's good. No pressure signs. It's comparable to Lapua brass if you're going to neck down six five to six mil Creedmoor. The load should almost be the same. I think there was a slight velocity difference of maybe 10 feet per second slower with Peterson Brass with the same recipe as Lapua. The primer pockets are not as tight as Lapua. Lapua Brass with CCIBR4s or Wolf Magnum, when you try to seat those primers in the pocket, it is very snug. I use a Lee Hand primer, it is snug. Peterson Brass, it's not as snug. I mean, it's not loose, but it's nowhere near as tight as Lapua. I think Lapua brass, that, that primer pocket is tight. I mean, it is really tight. Borderline, you think you're gonna shave the shave walls or the shave a little bit of the cut material off the primer. But um, I like that kind of, but at the same time, the easier, easier fit of primers and Peterson brass, a little, it feels a little bit better as far as um, any kind of concerns on the primer being deformed. So take it take it how you will as far as that comparison on the uh, the primer pockets. So yeah, Peterson brass. I think it's eighty dollars for a hundred. 
I think it, it's 39 per 50, I think. So about $80 per 100. It's definitely cheaper than Liverpool brass. So if you're looking for a 6 mil option, and they do make 6 mil, six five millimeter creed war now brass, if you want a small rifle primer option, check out Peterson cartridge. It's less expensive than Lapua. Better quality than Starline. As far as I'm concerned, better quality control. They punch, they undrill the primer flash holes on the Peterson cartridge brass, just like Starline. But Peterson does bevel the edges of the burret. And I will show some macro photos of what the flash holes look like. Not as clean as Lapua, but nowhere near as dirty as Starline. So... Peterson Brass right now, I can give them a good good word of mouth right now. Definitely give them a try if you're looking for 6 mil Creedmoor, since they have a small rifle version out there. And if you want some other cartridges, they do make uh, brass for 6.5 as well, and 308, and a bunch of other popular cartridges. Their 338 Lapool Brass is very popular because of the price point and the quality. So Anyway, I need to get going so I can actually uh, get to work and not have to waste a vacation day on this. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as my Tacoma, uh, I, I was debating on whether or not I'm going to get sell this. This truck is really good. It's a standard cab. They don't make standard cab Tacomas anymore. It has no frills on it. It even has, um, manual windows, manual door locks, but it's a nice vehicle. The, the only bad thing is the paint hasn't held up. I'm very disappointed in the paint on the Tacoma hood is cracking fading the roof is fading and then the uh oxidizing and then the the t the actual bed though it's fine i scratched it because loading stuff into the bed so i scratched the sides but it's just the hood and the roof and i don't know if i want to waste time repainting it um, if i keep it i may do i may do it if i'm going to sell it i won't bother uh the kelly blue book on this is anywhere from eight to ten in good condition the exterior is the only bad thing. The interior is great. Engine's running fine. I've only got 58,000 miles on this thing on a 2010. It's it's a solid truck. I mean, it does what it needs to do as far as a light truck, a small compact light truck. I know I've been offered. I people on occasion will leave notes on this car or this truck because they want to buy it. And and at the time, you know, before I got my Jeep, I was like, why would I sell this? I mean, I need this to get to my stuff to the range. If I sell this, I'm gonna have to buy another truck anyway. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, this is a solid truck. And I don't think there's any value in selling it at this point to recover any sort of money, even if I get 8000 or 10000 for it. It's just, I think right now it's worth more to keep it. Anyway, that's it for this range vlog. Uh, today is Wednesday, March 7th at the West End Gun Club, or exiting the West End Gun Club. Not sure where I'm going to shoot again anytime this month. I may try to head out to Desert Marksman to shoot some distance to test out the Peterson cartridge loads at three, four, five, and 600 yards. So I'll get some actual distance data on this. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching this range vlog. I will see you again in the next episode. I was gonna do a, a video on the recovery gear because I assembled a kit of, of, of items to supplement the winch. Did it head out? Yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs>